Kia Kipa. Oh, hi gang. We're starting to get our first real spring harvests. I say first, but I mean as a general thing. We've been eating these lettuces for a few days now and they're lovely little open sort of oak leaf type lettuces. Uh, they're a nice early variety. I can't tell you what it is because they're seed saved from last year. They're my green bright oak leaf ones that I've saved. So they're just a delightful bright early lettuce and they're making lovely dinners at the moment. Bok, I'm Mandio. This is Grow, Make, Cook and welcome to my garden. I grew up in Australia in a permaculture family but after we got married Mr O and I moved here to his home country of Croatia. I am a passionate and hands-on homemaker and gardener and I love life's simple pleasures. So join me on my journey and together we can learn to grow, make and cook. This is the first week in May or Sviban. Just here underneath the beautiful oh, marbled veined flowers of my ricola or rocket I have my radishes or rotkvitsa. I've still got those little signs we made. So these is the very first harvest of our radishes this year and I think oh they're looking all right. Now this bed whilst it looks lovely with all of my mato violets has gone over or corn salad has gone over into flour um, it's no longer very yummy for eating. So we've eaten a lot of mato violets over the winter and I've been throwing it in whenever I make salads and things over winter. Um, but I'm starting to have a bit of a problem and that is that my mato violets has crept out of my garden bed and if you'll have a look just over here, it's now in my garden paths. It's growing everywhere so what I'm going to do is just mow this down just cut it I won't uh, pull it out I will just keep it but all of this stuff in the garden bed needs to go so in this bed I also have a couple of stowaways these are chamomile which I planted in this bed last year and they went to seed and obviously I have got three or four that have come up on their own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these back hard even though the flowers are lovely. I might keep the tops and use them for tea um, but I'll cut these back hard and transplant them. It's not always 100% success with these for that exact process because these are annuals they only normally flower once, so it's a bit of a risk. Finding a new home for this chamomile feels like a lovely job to do on this beautiful spring afternoon. And I have noticed that I've also got a couple of stowaway Mato Violets plants on there, and I'm not actually going to worry about that too much. If they live, and they survive and they add some mato violets down here to the cottage garden well then all the better but I'm not actively trying to save that so they're kind of on the edge and you can see he's kind of half attached we'll just see if they survive really crushed by the dog I will just take off those flower stems I really have very mixed feelings about this job it's a sort of happy sad and there's one more issue the other things I've got in here are endive which we'll pick and eat but also garlic. Now it's a bit early really to be harvesting garlic. 
it's grown on quite long so this was planted the middle of last year um, and it's a long-term crop really and I think it's important to clear the bed and some of these clumps have gotten a bit big so I think even though it's early I'm going to dig it all up and we'll see how it goes. Well, these really have not done anywhere near as much as I had hoped they would do. Um, but I think we'll eat them all fresh as fresh garlic. Now, garlic is a wonderful plant in that it's not just these little bulbules you can eat. So with this very young garlic, you can really get away with eating the whole thing. Now, usually, uh, when you would let your garlic mature and, and get to be great big bulbs, um, you would harvest the scapes. So that's the unopened flower head and you would eat those. And you might also harvest some of these stems. But because these are very young and this is a lovely rich purple garlic, <laughs> because this is a lovely rich purple garlic, you can see that colour there. Um, if you eat it young and fresh like this before you let it dry, really that whole thing is going to be good. I love a freshly dug over garden bed. There's something so lovely about all that loose soil. Now, you've probably noticed that I still have one, one, two, three, four, five little endive plants that I've left here. And these guys I'm going to cut and then dig over because endive, unlike most of the lettuces, the oak leaf kind that I grow, Endive will actually last a few days in the fridge, so these will make salads for the next couple of days. So, this is the bed a day later, and two whole wheelbarrows full of freshly sifted, lovely homemade compost, and really I would usually advise people to wait at least a few days before planting into freshly composted material. Um, in fact, if you're going to do any digging, I guess, you should really let it settle. Let some rain fall on it, let the whole thing just calm down before you plant into it. My problem is that I've been really, really slack and I've got a lot of things that really need to go out into the garden bed. So I'm going to completely disregard my own advice, all of my advice really, and get planting. Now. Before I start really breaking a whole lot of rules, I'm going to try and get this down to a fairly fine tilth. That's probably a word you'll hear a lot on a lot of other gardening channels and a lot of, uh, I don't know, television shows. Fine tilth just means that you're breaking up all of these big clods of dirt to make the surface of your soil fine. So when I talk about a fine tilth, it's just that the surface of the soil is nice and easy to work. Now that I've watered in my parsley and I've started the new things in this bed, it's time to move on to a lovely new addition to my cottage garden.
Now, just down here by this lovely peony and some lettuce, a little baby sunflower, I've got my chamomile, rosemary. It's all kind of a lovely jumble in here at the cottage garden, but this is something that I have wanted for a very long time. It's a bit of a cottage garden staple. It's phlox. Now, I adore the sweet smell of this plant and it should be hardy here. This should last and last and last. It should be a perennial that will just go on for years. So I'm going to pop it in here between these two stepping stones here because this is a creeping phlox, a ground cover, and it'll stay close to the ground here and just fill in this gap. And then when it starts to fill this space, I'm going to divide it up and plant it out again and again and again. This is an investment in the future of my garden. So while it was pricey this one time, it should serve me for many years to come. This is a lovely job to be doing in this beautiful spring weather. This is my new plum tree and I am just pinching out the growing tips, maybe not from that one, but from all of my high up branches to sort of prevent it from keeping growing directly upwards. What I want this to do is to just bush out nicely and when you remove the very tippy top growth like this from a branch, what happens is all the energy goes down into making side shoots and side branches. So this will bush up nicely and become a nice big healthy bushy tree, hopefully with lots of plums on it. These are my broad beans down here and they've finally come into flower. They're beautiful. I adore these beautiful white and black flowers of these Aquadulce broad beans. And I really can't wait to get in and finally get a good harvest this year. I'm super excited for these guys. <laughs> but I think that's probably about all we've got time for today. So if you like what we're doing, please like the video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and use the bell icon below if you want notifications. Thanks for watching and until next time, Dovi Genia!